De Beers and its partner, Mountain Province Diamonds, are planning to develop a new diamond mine in the Northwest Territories. It is called the Gacho Quay Project, located at Kennedy Lake. This would be the third diamond mine in Canada for De Beers. The two others, which opened in 2008, are the Snap Lake Mine and the Victor Mine, located in northern Ontario. The Gacho Quay project is located about 280 kilometers northeast of Yellowknife and 80 kilometers southeast of De Beers Snap Lake Mine. De Beers has been working to develop the mine for some time. Exploration work started about 20 years ago in the Kennedy Lake area. Diamonds were confirmed there in 1998, and that year the site name was changed to Gacho Quay, which is Chippewan for a place where big rabbits are found. The first plans for the Gacho Quay project were presented in 2005. Kennedy Lake is only accessible by air except in winter, when De Beers can build a 120-kilometer winter access road to bring in supplies. The access road joins the Tibet to Contuito Winter Road at kilometer 271, near the north end of McKay Lake. Kennedy Lake is one of thousands of small lakes on the Barrens, and it flows into the Lockhart River drainage system. At 870 hectares, or 8.7 kilometers squared, Kennedy Lake is about 1% of the size of Lac de Gras. Four kimberlite deposits were discovered here, but only three of the deposits contain diamonds that can be mined. Mining these three is expected to take 11 years. The three deposits are named 5034, Hearn, and Tuzo. They are located under the southern part of Kennedy Lake, where the water is about 8 meters deep. To mine the kimberlite, the water level in Kennedy Lake will be lowered. The first dike, Dike A, located at a shallow narrows, will separate Kennedy Lake into two smaller lakes. The clear water near the top of the remainder of Kennedy Lake will be pumped north into Lake N11 and into the eastern end of Kennedy Lake. This will expose natural lake bottom features to allow construction of dikes to separate the north and south basins of Kennedy Lake. At the same time, clean water will be pumped from Kennedy Lake until the water level drops by about two meters. When lake sediment shows up in the water, it will be settled by adding flocculants. The tiny grains and flocculants will combine and cause the sediment to settle in the water management pond. The quality of the water will be monitored carefully. The south basin will be completely dewatered to allow mining of the 5034 and Hearn kimberlite deposits. Dikes will be constructed around the lake to divert the streams that feed Kennedy Lake. This will reduce the amount of clean water entering the mine area. The existing site grade, as well as ditches, dikes, berms and ponds, will control runoff from the developed areas of the mine and divert runoff to the water management pond or an empty pit. This water may be used in the process plant. As the water level in Kennedy Lake is lowered, construction will start in the mine's infrastructure. Construction is expected to take two years and about 430 workers will be required to build the mine. During operations, peak employment will be about 360 people. At the start of construction, an accommodations complex will be built to house the workers. This will include administration offices, kitchen and dining room, food storage, first aid room, and recreational facilities. Mining equipment and equipment for the process plant will be looked after in the maintenance complex. It will include service bays, machine shops, and lubricant storage. A warehouse will be connected to this service area. 
the sewage treatment plant will be capable of handling the maximum number of people on the site. Solids from the sewage treatment plant will be disposed of appropriately. Processed water will be placed in the water management pond or used in the process plant. Fresh drinking water will come from the eastern end of Kennedy Lake. It will be treated to meet drinking water standards before it is distributed. There is a diesel-powered plant to supply electricity for the mine. Heat from the generators will be recovered to heat other buildings. Diesel fuel for the generators will be stored in eight prefabricated 500,000 liter tanks and two larger tanks that will hold 18 million liters of fuel. All of the fuel tanks will be located in lined and diked containment areas, which will have a capacity larger than the largest tank to ensure any spills can be contained. Aviation fuel will also be stored in self-contained tanks. The process plant is where kimberlite ore is crushed and screened in a series of steps. Then diamonds are recovered from the crushed material. The process plant is designed to handle 3 million tons of kimberlite per year, or about 37 haul truck loads each day. The first area in the process building crushes the kimberlite and separates the heavy minerals and diamonds from the rest of the rock. In the second area, called the recovery plant, X-ray machines and grease belt diamond recovery systems recover the diamonds. The process plant will produce fine and coarse crushed kimberlite. Fine ground kimberlite will be sent as a slurry through a pipe to the fine process kimberlite containment facility and to the mined out pits. Coarse crushed kimberlite, which has a fine gravel-like consistency, will be trucked as a relatively dry material to the coarse waste rock pile to be stored in a bermed area. Blasting materials are stored far from the buildings for safety. Materials and equipment needed to build and operate the mine site will be delivered in winter along the winter road route used during the exploration phase of the project. Access is from the Tibet Lake to Contoito Winter Road. This route was used during the exploration phase of the project. The airstrip will be long enough to handle the small and large aircraft needed for the mine year-round. It will be built during the first year of construction and used throughout the life of the mine to bring in employees, fresh food, and other time-sensitive supplies. The airstrip will be located on the southeast side of Kennedy Lake. Access to the airstrip will be by a road over Dyke A. The diamond-bearing ore lies just below the bottom of Kennedy Lake. The shape of the kimberlite ore bodies, as well as their location near the surface, means that an open-pit mining method is the best way to access them. The company will dig down from the surface using heavy earth-moving equipment. This will create an open pit at each of the three ore bodies. De Beers has planned the mining sequence to ensure safe, efficient excavation of the ore and waste rock. A key part of the plan includes using the mined-out pits to hold processed kimberlite or processed kimberlite and waste rock. Pre-stripping of 5034 will begin during the construction phase. The waste rock will be used to create the mine site and to build dikes and roads. Rock not required for construction will be placed in the south waste rock pile and later in the west waste rock pile. Runoff from the waste rock piles will be contained in the mined out pits, diked areas and the water management pond. The first ore body to be mined will be 5034. By year 4, mining will have reached the deeper part of 5034 pit. Work will have started on pre-stripping Hearn pit. Progressive reclamation will begin using coarse process kimberlite and waste rock to cover the fine process kimberlite containment facility and the coarse process kimberlite pile. 
The groundwater flowing into 5034 pit will be pumped either into the water management pond or the process plant. By year 5, work at 5034 will be complete, and mining will have started on the Hearn pit and on pre-stripping the Tuzo pit. Now, waste rock and fine processed kimberlite will be deposited in the mined out 5034 pit. Groundwater from Tuzo and Hearn pits will also be pumped into the mined out 5034 pit or into the water management pond. By year 6, Reclamation of the coarse kimberlite pile will be complete. Reclamation will continue on the fine processed kimberlite containment facility. By year 8, the Hearn deposit will be mined out and fine processed kimberlite will be placed in the Hearn pit. Groundwater from the Tuzo pit will also be diverted to the Hearn pit. Water levels in Hearn and 5034 will start to rise. By mining year 11, the fine process Kimberlite containment facility will be almost completely reclaimed. Domestic and industrial waste will be divided into hazardous, burnable, and non-burnable items. A landfill area for non-hazardous waste will be constructed in the waste rock pile. A land farm will be created to deal with hydrocarbon contaminated soils. Incinerators will handle solid waste that can be burned. Treated liquid from the sewage plant will be piped to the water management pond or used in the process plant. To close the mine, the buildings, roads and airstrip will be removed or decommissioned. By this time, the kimberlite containment areas will be covered with waste rock and the 5034 pit will be filled with rock and processed kimberlite. The lake will start to refill. While the mine is still operating, water will be allowed to collect in the southern basins of Kennedy Lake. At closure, the dikes in the northern and southern basin will be lowered to allow water to flow into the 5034 and Tuzo pits. When the water level in the lake reaches its original elevation, the last dike will be removed. Dike A was the first one that was built. When this dike is opened, the natural flow of streams and rivers in the Kennedy Lake area will be restored. The plan for the Gacho Kwe mine is designed to meet the highest international standards for environmental management, ISO 14001. This standard ensures legal compliance, pollution prevention, and continual improvement. De Beers is committed to involving Northerners in the discussion about the Gacho Kwe project. The company is also committed to training Northern residents for mining and related jobs, and has in place an NWT business policy that is ensuring NWT and Aboriginal businesses are significant partners in the success of our current NWT mining operations. Mountain Province Diamonds invites you to talk to us about this exciting new mining project. Talk to the team making this presentation, or write or contact our representatives to arrange a meeting.